Hello and welcome everyone. Thank you for tuning in. This video is about the Cisco um, small business series, the SG550XG24F. So this is a 10 gigabyte SFP plus stackable managed switch. So I already unpacked it for you. So as you can see in the box is the switch itself, of course. And for the first time you get a Cisco cable like with the Catalyst switches. Uh, so I'm thinking the command line will be similar than the Catalyst switches if you want to use command line interface configuration. Uh, of course you get the uh, brackets here and the little uh, feet to put them in the office or in a the rack. Then the power cable of course and this one is a very handy one. This is a 90 degree uh, one if you have less space at the back it's handy to have the 90 degrees one so you can hook it up uh, it's a pretty deep switch um, so I'll put in the uh, measurements in the description if you want to know how deep it is uh, it's a little deep for a small rack mount case wall, wall mount case uh, so it fits best in a server rack of course with your storage or servers so, um, what's in the front? In the front you see your 24 ports, of course, uh, to connect all your SFP uh, connections, SFP cards and storage. Uh, on the left side here, you get two rows of LED indicators. First row is a simple with a system uh, indication, which is the master. Uh, you get your fan, if there's an error in the fan, and your light for the RPS connection at the back. The second one is the stackable stack ID. So the first one, of course, is a master and will ID one, and you get up to four stackable switches with this one. So that's, uh, yeah, if you get the 24 times four, or you also have models with the 48 uh, ports. On the right side, you get uh, two uh, ports combined with the SFP ports or UTP ports, so you can hook up copper if you want. Um, these are also 10 gigabytes, so you can choose either one of those. Now, important in this uh, model, um, it's I think for the 350XG and for the 550XG, if I've been reading correctly, you get a uh, OOB port. Why? Um, I've been reading that the management IP is not configured on the VLAN like the most switches of Cisco, but it's configured directly on this port. So if you want to manage this switch, you have to hook up on this port to your management uh, network here. So that's, I think, really nice to split up your management. So the other switch you should I mean, you lose a port for it. So okay, um, let's see on the left side here. On the switch you get a nice uh, yeah grill no perform perforation for intake of the air of course on the other side you get your power connection of course you get your RPS connection here which is for DC voltage, if I'm correct. If not, I have to look it up in the manual. And yeah, here's your console port, which connects your Cisco cable. And on the right side, you get your five fans here. Um, now I've been reading there's redundancy built in in these fans and plus one. So if one fails, one takes over. So don't think every uh, ventilator is uh, turning in production. So maybe one, two, three, I don't know. Uh, so there is redundancy built in here. Now, uh, reason why I've bought the um, SFP model is because I've been reading that the SFP models uses less power than the copper ones. Um, which is handy to yeah, use less power for uh, in your data center or at the customer's rack. Um, 
Also, I want to test this one, this model, if it's possible. I mean, yeah, it's 10 gigabyte switch, but um, the price range is between two and three thousand euros, I think. Um, and I want to use it with small customers to get them um, their servers on a high performance than higher performance than gigabytes. So. Um, instead of you uh, providing the high-end Cisco Catalyst 10 gigabytes or the uh, Juniper or Brocade or any other switch that is more expensive than this one so that's why I'm testing this one with the um, Intel cards X520s, X720s uh, which they work they work I already tested that one uh, but I'm going to test it with the other storage, QNAP, Synology, uh, all the other storage out there. Maybe IBM, if I find one, the V-Series 2700s, if I found one, if I find one. So, uh, you have to get a cable, of course, a SFP cable, and I went for the Cisco model for better compatibility. SFP uh, Hash 10 GB CU one meter and didn't need a long one so it's only one meter so let's hook up on the power um, and then you can hear how loud or it is it's not that loud so it's doable for in the office some customers don't have um, a separate rack room a server room and you need to put them in the office so it's not that light for five fans. Uh, it is, of course, always a noise in the office that's irritating. But it's doable. It's not like it's a high pitch ventilator tone uh, for so small ventilators. So I'm gonna hook it up on the management port and maybe the CLI to see what it's in it. So we'll show you the interface quick and uh, see the interface for the CLI also but I'm guessing it's most uh, the same like the catalyst switches so let's go ahead and hook this up okay so I hooked it up on my laptop here um, and the default IP address of the management is uh, one point 254 at the end so let's go ahead and log in uh, as you can see there is in two applications running out on it switch management and network management now I'll log in in both of them so you can see them the switch management is configuration of your switch the network management is as you can see later very handy because you can connect it to uh, the other switches you can see a topography in that switch itself so you'll see what I mean in uh, in a minute so let's go ahead and log in to the Cisco switch the interface would be the same I think uh, as the other uh, models as you know from the small business so that would be very similar um, but I looked into it and there is a basic mode and advanced mode so I have to check why there's two what the two differences are. So the basic mode is loading now. As you can see, the interface is um, pretty much the same as the other switches of Cisco, you know. So you can uh, see the most um, things you find for VLANs, for port management, for uh, IP configuration, security, access control, is all the same all things you find back so let's switch to advanced here and see what it does for me i don't see any difference probably because there are more options here which i didn't go into right now so uh, let's go and stay in advance you get your feelings of course that's handy i have to create them again smart ports so the device detection method cdp or ldp is enabled automatically you can switch the ports on for uh, smart detection, which is an iPhone, uh, IP phone, sorry, iPhone, a switch router, access point, or a host. I'm gonna click on host also, easy. 
let's see an administration you get your banners and your location contacts console settings gonna be boot discovery protocols here you can set all sort of things here uh, it still looks all the same we get spanning tree of course multicasts mac address tables all the things you find in most of them i think it's in layer 2 so you can put it in layer 3 somewhere uh, stack management no oh, nice you get the view also from the layout from the switch which is nice uh, it's unit 1 this is chain you can put it in hybrid or native let's see um, what else well, pretty much HH SSH server storm control that's maybe a new one not sure haven't used it very much SNMP you can hook it up to an SNMP now let's go you can log into the SNA they call it an SNA you can log in to that one or log back out and log into the appliance application uh, network management it takes a little longer to load the first time but once you're in it's I think pretty pretty smooth now it's loading as you can see and it will only find of course my this switch my only switch for the moment it's not hooked up on my uh, network ma management network so i can't add the other switches which you can do here add switch and to the ip address and then you can probably see and manage in here um you can put it on a click sign here and then you can click here and then you will see under one device you can start configuring that client um which probably if you hook up pc or shows you can define them port by port and here you see all the overview of the ports uh like i said all 10 gigabytes the combination ports to also 10 gigabytes copper or fiber and here the last one is the uh, copper UUB port like I said for management um, you can set up notifications yeah, all warnings because all my interfaces are down let's see can we do something here device IP see the product name explore device What's that? That doesn't do much. On GUI, probably back to uh, the interface. From yeah, it's back to the interface. It's already loaded in the other tab here. Uh, you can put in description. Oh, you can do other services here. Let's see DNS. Okay, you can put in DNS services syslog yeah you can put in syslog servers ah farm farm management for the firmware upgrade here that would be handy if you had a central point to upgrade all your switches firmware i'm still on 2.25 i think there's a 2.3 for this switch as of recording 9 december 2017 so i have to upgrade that one before I forget, I promised you to show the command line interface also. So I've put in a little putty session here on my COM port. I use the Cisco and already changed my password to something different. So we're in. Um, I'm not a Cisco expert. Um, seems like the backspace doesn't work. Home and also not. So we have to type correctly and I know the show run command and it looks like it's pretty much the same configuration you can type help or no question mark you see all the available commands here let's go to the 
interface as you can see there is pretty much the same as the um, let's go xg i think it should use the port number and device number i'm not sure why the backspace isn't working probably some configuration fault in my session terminal session but there it is say uh, one uh, wrap up and that's it and you're in bad parameter so yeah it's pretty much the same as the catalyst um, switches uh, so you could use your experience from the Cisco's catalyst command line phase in this one so this is a real quick overview uh, of the uh, web interface of the smart network apply application and the um, yeah, switch GUI interface configuration interface. Um, if you like the video thumbs up if you didn't thumbs down if you have any questions leave a comment and I'll try to find out and look it up and try to answer it uh, and yeah thank you for watching